Hey everyone, in this video I want to quickly walk through how we can get to and use a certain file from a GitHub repo. Maybe someone's pointed you to a repo and you just want to get a certain file and it's really not clear, how do you do that? As always, if this is useful, please go ahead and like, subscribe, comment and share and hit that bell icon to get notified of new content. Now when I think about what is GitHub, it's not just a file storage place. It's much richer environment. There's a whole set of different capabilities. I can think about a certain repository. So we're going to have some repo. And that repo offers a number of different pieces of functionality. For example, version control. So it's not just storing a file, it's actually tracking changes made to a file. If I jump over, for example, and go ahead and look at a certain repository. So in this case, I'll go and look at my random stuff repo. And within here, I can just pick a certain folder. And you can see here, I've got a file. Well, sure, I can see the content of the file here. But one of the things GitHub does is you'll notice I have this option for history. And as the person who's developing, contributing to this, I say, hey, I have a certain version I want to keep, I can perform a commit. So I can go and look at previous versions in time, I can see comments, I can see when it happened. And I can see well, all of the changes that actually occurred on a particular version. So a big reason people use GitHub is, hey, I'm developing something and I want to be able to track as I make changes to it, I may want to be able to go back to a previous point in time. And I don't just have to think about this single line of time where I do these various commits as I have some changes. Maybe I have a certain file I'm working on or collection of files. And that same file, well, maybe is being used as part of a bug fix. Maybe it's being used as part of kind of a, a new release, a V2. And what we can do is we can create branches and say, hey, the bug fix branch, well, the bug fix branch has its own kind of version of that file where I could go and make changes to that just as part of the bug fix. Meanwhile, the V2 version of the file can have a completely different set of changes being made to it. And at a certain point along the the timeline, I could bring them together. I could actually bring in and perform a merge where I can have the sum of all of those changes. So it's really useful when I have maybe different streams of work going on. The same thing happens if I have multiple people working on a project together. Hey, they're each working on maybe their own changes and we continuously integrate those changes in together to find maybe any conflicts very, very quickly. And that's actually a key point. You have this repo, but if I'm someone working on my PC, I actually have a complete copy of that repo on my local machine. So if I was offline in any way, I can still work on any file I want. And then we can do things like a, a push and a pull to synchronize those together. I can have DevOps and pipelines to deploy as I make these changes. And all of this is a really long way of saying it's not just storing files. It has a rich set of capabilities that's really useful as I'm developing some projects. And it doesn't have to be code. It could be a script I'm writing. It could be even some kind of document that I just want to version control and track. So it lets me contribute and collaborate with other people, which is a key use and reason we have this. But, hey, I just want to grab a file from a GitHub. I don't care about any of this. So what can I do? Maybe I only care about the current point in time and I want to grab the file. Well, there's a number of different options to do this. As we just kind of store, when I look at a repo, there might be a readme file um, as part of that, then I can actually see the code. If I just care about a file, maybe just a couple of files, one of the things I can do is depending on the type of the file, I can select it. Now you might say, well, I could try and select this and then copy it, but that's kind of painful. But if I go to here and click the raw button, 
what we're gonna see that does is if we actually think about the URL, come on, it's kind of github.com, what's gonna happen is it's gonna go to a raw.githubusercontent.com and then the same, hey, the repo, the master branch, the folder and the file, but now it's just the content. And at this point, I could just right click and do a save as. So that makes it easy for me to get to that file. Now, what about if it's not a text file? Well, if it's not a text file, so let's jump out of this for a second, and we'll go and look at some of my whiteboards. So these are PNG, these are image files. So if I select one of these, well, it might actually show me, this is what the content looks like, but it, instead of giving me a raw button, it actually gives me a nice little download button. So from here, I could just go ahead and download the file. So now I have this SVG file, it's available to me. So now, once again, I could right click and do save as. So it's giving me easy ways to get to the actual content. Additionally, what I may see, let's actually go and look at a different repo. Let's look at my uh, DevOps Masterclass, for example. What you might see is the person who kind of looks after the maintainer of the repository, they may create releases. So if there's a release at a certain major milestone in the project, they went ahead and said, hey, I wanna make this complete repository available as a release. And so a release lets me just download it all as a zip or a tar file. So that would give me everything in the repository. Now, even if there is not a release available to me, if I'm just looking at the top level folder, if I go to code, you'll actually notice there is a download zip option. So it will take the current content of the repository and make it available as a zip file for me. So now it's gonna download all of that into a zip. I'll be able to open it up and extract it. So now it's every single file from that repo is available for me to use. And there are other third party tools out there. There are other things we can do. So all of these things are taking a current point in time view of the repo, which might be all you want. But imagine there's a repository that has some things you care about, but you care about it long term. So as it gets new features, well, I'd like to be able to easily stay up to date with that. Maybe I even want to be able to contribute to it. I don't want to keep downloading a new zip file and extract it and all of those kind of things. So a better option we can do is I talked about, hey, we have a complete copy of the repo. That is complete copy of the repo is actually something we call a clone. So what we can do is for a repository, we can create a local clone of that. And then at any time in the future, we can actually kind of do a, a fetch and merge the changes into our local clone. Or we can just do a pull, and bring all those things together. So let's, let's have a look how that would work. So once again, if we go and look at our repo, one of the key things we see here is it actually has this, well, there's a path. It's giving me this full path to this repository. And I can just say, hey, I want to actually go ahead and copy this to my clipboard. Now, once I've done that copy, I need Git locally on my machine. Git is the client that is actually powering all of this version control, the branch features. GitHub is just kind of a server version to help me work with those projects. So what I can do is I can go to git-scm, and in here I can go to downloads, and download a version of Git for my machine. Once I've installed it, I now have Git locally available. So the next thing I would now do is just from a command window, I can be in a folder and I just want to create a clone. Now I don't need to do anything more than if I just look currently, I just got a couple of files in there. If I do get clone and then paste that name that it had, remember all I've done is in here, the bit I cared about is this. 
So I was just taking this and I was doing that, hey, copy to clipboard. So if I just execute, it's cloning it into my local folder. Now if I do a DIR, I actually have, hey, I have the folder, it created a folder of the name of the repo. And if I go into that, I have the full content available to me. And now at any time in the future, if I wanted to update it, I can just type within that folder, get pull. And that will go and look for any changes with a git fetch and then merge them into um, what I'm currently looking at. What it's actually done is it has kept a reference to its upstream origin, which is the GitHub repo. And so that's kind of the, the better way to do that. Now I can use tools. I showed you VS Code before, and this is kind of open on the random stuff, but I could absolutely now just go and open that folder that I just created. So if I go into that and select it, I can say, yes, I'm gonna trust this. And now I have that full view of everything that's going on. And I still have those source control. From here, I could go and do that same thing. I could go and do a pull, or I could just do sync. It has option to all of the history. So I can still see all of the different history things that are going on through the VS Code. The only thing I have to do once I install VS Code is if I run, sorry, view my command palette, I have to go to my preferences and want my open settings JSON. And I just have to tell it where the Git executable is. So the only thing you really care about is this line right here, git.path. And you tell it where you put Git. Notice I've got double slashes that you have to put as part of the JSON file. And now VS Code fully understands and has all of that kind of version control and Git integration just as part of it. So that would be another option on how I could actually go and work with all of that content. But that's it. Um, absolutely, I could just go into GitHub and as you could so I could look at the raw for an individual file or download. Maybe there's a release, which is a, some major milestone in its life. Maybe I just go and hey, create a zip file, but ideally get the Git tool installed on your machine. I can do a git clone of the repo. And now at any time I can just do that git pull to get the latest changes made available to me. And I did a whole class on git. I think it's like over two hours long, so it's fairly detailed, but it lets you really understand everything you can do with git and this version control, how I could actually contribute to this repo using things like forks and pull requests and it's just really nice to understand this. But I hope that helped. Until next time, take care.